Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode powered by Hayabusa is how to warm up your defense before fights and sparring. In today's episode, we're gonna break down how to warm up your defense for fights and sparring. Too many times, even before sparring, we just jump into the ring and I have a bad habit of that. So, I'm gonna give you different types of progressions that you can use to warm up your defense effectively. And even when you talk about fighting and warming up for fights, too many times it's about the offense. We see someone sit there and kind of work with their coach, hit the pads, move, you know? It's just very offensive based. But improving your defense in sparring drills, improving your defense before you spar just makes you that much more comfortable. I know before I went into a fight, it's important to feel punches coming after you so you can feel what it feels like before you get in there. Because the biggest shock that happens is when, oh my God, like you're not used to that power or the stinging of the skin. So it's important to work your defense. Make sure your shins are sharp, your forms are nice and tight and dense. So I'm gonna talk about how I use a little bit of a system progression that starts very basic and builds itself up, okay? Good defense means one, not getting hit. Right? Two, it means managing good distance. And three, it means being able to defend and be putting yourself in a position to be able to counter, right? It's one, good to defend, but you wanna win a fight, right? So you have to be able to put offense after the, the block, the defense. Okay, so let's get into how I start to do it first. The, mo the first thing when talking about defense is understanding distance control. You need to understand the ranges of the fight. If I'm head to head with someone in close range, yeah, I'm gonna get hit and defense is gonna be different. Now, when I'm in mid range where I can hit my opponent and they can hit me, right? Defense is different, I'm still in a danger zone. So if I wanna stay safe and I wanna have the safest defense, I need to have the biggest amount of space between my opponent and I. So I need to stay in long range. So in order to stay in long range, you have to have the footwork, the, the ability to move your feet and stay long. So this is where my triangle step drilling comes into play. And no better way than to practice this is using a zombie drill. Zombie drills are very important concepts in the bazooka system because a zombie drill is basically, you're putting someone in there instead of a pad. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna have one, your partner or your coach is gonna walk at you and you're just gonna move and manage distance. Like sometimes even I'll throw some punches, nice and long, just to show my fighter, my training partner, how long their technique and how long their distance has to be to stay safe. So using this zombie drill is good. Now, even as the fighter now, for those who follow who are a little bit more advanced, even the person defensively. So if I'm moving and the zombie's coming at me, I can be using probing punches, fainting, moving. I can still create a safe system, right? In order to keep myself safe. So if you're advanced, this is where managing distance and on the outside mixing feints is gonna help because I need to feint to get my opponent to stop throwing, to react. Even me throwing probing punches like this, if I'm sitting occupying space, right? What I call, it's, it's not easy for my opponent to walk in on that. So it's gonna hold them back a little bit. Them not throwing at me is defense. So me throwing these light punches might keep my opponent, I say might because every fighter's different, but if I'm fighting someone who's shelled and they're staying shelled by me throwing these movements and, and uh, pro punches, it's just gonna keep me safe and defensive. So the zombie drill, manage distance, use strikes, use feints, keep the space. If they can touch you, it's too close. Okay, so that is one way. The second way to make it a little bit more interactive and fun, but remember, it's gotta be safe. This is where I can start playing around with the touch games, right? Where now we're gonna play and try to basically keep our distance. I, I call it almost like sword fighting. You've seen people do it with drills, um, with their training wear. Even if you wear a white t-shirt and you have markers, right? You can kind of play where you're trying to paint and get the, the marker on your opponent. So this teaches you to stay long, move, evade. And as a coach now, you give certain targets to touch. So some of the best ones, you know, touching the shoulder. Uh, I'm not gonna pick the face because the finger's in the eyes, but I can pick the shoulder, the stomach, the inside of the leg. MMA guys like to touch, you know, the inside of the knees. So there's different touches, but it teaches you to manage distance in and out, and it just gets your footwork activated to do that, 
Okay, so that's important. So the zombie drill into the touch game now. And with the touch game, it's fun, it's interactive, it keeps you moving, so it just adds a nice freestyle element because too many times, if I'm going into a fight, I don't want to be so structured into something. I have things, I wanna be movement, I wanna be free, I just wanna relax a little bit, so the touch game works well um, for that. Now, now that you have more of the distance control, the touch and move, the in and out, this is where we wanna start working our forearms and our legs to block punches. So this is where we're gonna start throwing single strikes first, right? So in every fight or every combination, a lot of times it starts with the jab. So you just have one partner throw the jab or the coach. So now I'm moving and I'm just gonna play with different ranges just to get comfortable with, right? So first we gotta understand what are the different types of defense you can do upstairs. So I have my high guard, right? Walking forward, keeping my hands nice and high. That's one type of defense I can use. Right? The second one I can do is I can use my head movement, right? Slipping, moving. I can use parrying, right? So those are my, my, my three main ways I can block with my forearms. High guard, parry, and head movement, right? And footwork counts. That's the one we discussed earlier. So now just throwing the jab, right? So I'm gonna work the different ways. I might block the jab with a lead wedge, lock it, block with a parry, and then use head movement, right? So now I'm mixing and matching the different types of defense. A beginner who's practicing their defense drills would do more singular strikes. So I might say, okay, only use the lead wedge. So you're practicing using one of the three different types of defense. So this is where you can teach and progress. But if you're talking about getting ready for a fight, have it now. Natural, right? If the jab comes, you have to be able to just naturally move away from it and feel comfortable, all right? And then from the jab, you move over to the cross. And then this way, same system. Use a wedge, high guard, use a parry, use head movement. Right? The one thing you need to understand is when you start doing and playing defensive games, there's no one type of defense that's gonna work all the time. And, and I think it's important that your creativity and your striking, you know, punch, kick, knee, can also happen defensively. So even within one combination that's thrown at me, I might use parry, parry into my block, slip the head movement to counter or something, right? So I'm mixing and matching within one combination different types of defense. So, as a beginner, yes, start with the basic staples, build them in, but as you start becoming an intermediate, as an advanced, as you start sparring, start mixing and matching, right? Block, block, head movement, you know? Wedge, wedge, slip. So there's different ways to put them together to make it fun. Now that you have single strikes upstairs, now it's important to start throwing kicks. Now the biggest habit I see with kicks is not blocking them, which is so frustrating for me to see as a kickboxer and as a low kicker because me here at Bazooka Kickboxing, I teach my fighters, one, to be able to attack the leg, but if we're gonna be offensive low kickers, you better be able to defend them. So just as I expect my fighters to be able to go and finish their opponents with low kicks, it would be very bad if they were getting stopped with low kicks. So building in good blocking system with the legs is so important in all sports, uh, combat sports. So really, yes, you do the leg checkout, that's quick and easy, you can slip. Just like the hands, there's different ways to block it. So ideally, I don't wanna get hit, just like the punches. So I can pull my leg, evade, and use my distance. I'm not gonna get hit. Then I'm gonna start blocking with my legs. So ideally, you start with a low kick, body kick, head kicks, left and right side. Get the legs moving. So get practice lifting up the legs to block. Now, even once you get comfortable blocking single kicks, now this is where the defensive game becomes more like a fight. Now, one partner is gonna throw combinations, punch versus kick. So you have to start block, 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 boom, my leg's up. So even if I'm blocking a jab, cross, hook, low kick, you know, block. So now I'm being more interactive with my upstairs blocking as well as my leg blocking. But don't be content all the time slipping. Practice having control in your stance. When I'm in a long stance, ready, looking to attack, throwing my boxing really long, it's really hard for me to block in this long stance. So I have to learn control to be able to punch, block, and defend everything. So 
Stance length and control is so important when it comes to defense because if I'm throwing something and I'm out of position, that's when I can get hit. So if I got good defense but I'm overthrowing my techniques or my strikes and then I'm falling into a terrible position, I'm going to get hit more often. Right? So you can start seeing how defense, knowing to block is one thing, but understanding defense in the bigger picture is that much more important, right? If I'm striking wrong and I'm not in a good position, I'm gonna get hit. If I'm in mid range and not in long range, I'm gonna get hit. If I'm not using lateral motion and only circling backwards, I'm gonna get hit. So this is where defense is very interactive and you have to play and look at the bigger picture all the time. All right, so now that the one, single strikes are warmed up. Your footwork is warmed up. You can block upstairs, block with the legs. The final touch to it is almost a freestyle defense versus offense. So what I like to do now at this point is one person's basically gonna attack, the other person is gonna defend. So using the blocks, movement, attacking, just playing different games. Ideally, if you're warming up for a fight, this is where you start you know, showing the technique of the opponent. So if I'm the offensive person in the drill and I know my training partners or my fighters uh, opponent likes to throw a big bombing rear hand, I'm going to play what that fighter likes to do to make sure they're aware, make sure that level, that angle is defensively sound, right? So this is where you start playing with those types of things because that's what they're going to experience in the fight. So prepare them, get them used to that type of defense now before they get out there. And if you're fighting someone, the example of a hard kicker, right? So you have to be able to, before you get into the fight or the sparring, get used to someone really kicking your arms and you defending and really being stable to block all right now the last thing I like to add on this section because it transfers really well to sparring and fights now the the final sequence is when someone is attacking as the person defending I have to if I can't have the ability to move and create space and distance if I don't crash forward and I don't learn to clinch and close distance, I can get really hurt. If you look at the times when people get knocked out, what happens? They're caught in their shell and they're stuck against the cage or they're here. If I get in a position where I'm stuck here like this and my opponent's hitting me, I'm screwed. That is the worst position you ever want to be in and I call that being shelled up. If you're getting shelled up and someone's ripping you, at this point you can't see a thing. All right, so that's what you want to avoid. So if I can't move now, the pressure's coming, my only way to survive is boom, grabbing forward, grabbing the arms, using maybe a high guard shell, using my elbows, kind of to crash my distance and control their hands. By controlling their hands, they can no longer hit me and I'm safe, right? So in that round, and when you're playing that freestyle, you're gonna notice a lot of times I try to crash the distance because I wanna control the hands. Clinch is a safe way and a safe position to be not to get hit. So building it into your defensive repertoire is only going to help you stay defensive and stay safe in sparring and fights. If I'm fighting someone who's a great boxer or, you know, I have to use these different strategies in different ways, right? Uh, if I'm a kickboxer and I'm fighting a boxer, right, am I going to sit there in mid-range using a Philly shell or sit there on a high guard? No. They are going to eat you apart. They're going to hit you on angles, hit your body. Body. Being a kickboxer and a May fighter, it's a different sport. So how do you survive against the boxer? Well, it's using the clinch, tying them up, you know, using different strategies on the inside that they're not used to. Move and clinch, right? Staying in mid-range against a boxer would be the mistake. Same thing when it comes to a good kicker. There's different strategies and different types of defense, different equations of defense that will make you more successful. All right, so hope that helped you break down how to warm up your defense and sparring, okay? Now, I could go even further, and this will be uh, another future video because there was a lot of information, but a good part of defense is being able to counter after, okay? So make sure when you're practicing these drills and you're warming up for the fight that there, it's more than just to evade the shots and defend, right? So I can block, but now, or I can move, but if I'm here like this, avoiding shots, what can I counter with? At that point, I won't be able to counter well. I'm not structurally sound, so it's important to be nice and strong in your legs. All right, defense, very important. Work it, train it, and a lot of people I don't understand why they don't warm it up before their fights but it's really important to do so. 
All right, hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you keep liking, subscribing to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Head over to the sponsors page at HayabusaFight.com. Check out their boxing gloves as they're my personal favorite. You got perfect sports nutrition with the description in the below and using code Bazooka20, you can get 20% off your order. And make sure you head over to BazookaTraining.com. If you like these videos where I'm teaching home workouts, bag workouts, tutorials, we have a forum section there as well. So make sure you jump over for only $9.99 a month, which is a steal. You can get uh, three workouts a week and it's constantly evolving and getting better. All right, so that's bazookatraining.com for any bazooka merchandise, bazookashop.com as well. All right, we'll see you next time here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Over one year in lockdown, an empty gym, a divided community, many questions unanswered. They're doing the best they can, uh, trying to save their business. But on one man's 36th birthday, he decided Thanks. to fight back. <laughs> Subscribe now for only $9.99 USD a month. Bazooka Training dot com.